Last night was the last WWE special event of the year, TLC. They gave us tables, they gave us chairs, and they gave us disappointment. Let's get right into it. Hi, welcome to My Geek Therapy, where you help me and I help you process everything in the world of geek. And today, we're having some therapy on WWE TLC. Now, for this therapy session, we're going to need uh, some help. Maybe a little bit of uh, assistive technology, if you know what I mean. Inside joke. Now, as you see, I'm already wearing my, I guess now, vintage D-Generation X shirt. But we need one more thing to make this therapy session complete. Yes. Oh, this? This is nothing. This is just the big gold, big eagle, WWF World Heavyweight Championship belt signed by Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and Mick Foley. <laughs> and come on, the channel's already called My Geek Therapy. Did you not think I owned one of these? But to the average wrestling fan, WWE is so much more than that. Wrestling is so much more than that. It's a sport where men and women perform in fictional storylines to the entertainment of the viewer. Performers who use their bodies, their intelligence, and their propensity for storytelling to make us care about this. So now, let's get right into the matches that took place at last night's show. The first match of WWE's TLC was the New Day defending their Tag Team Championships against the Lucha Dragons and the Usos. The New Day continued to be the most entertaining and over part of the WWE. And no matter how hard the New Day tried, they walked out, they insulted the Boston crowd, and the Boston crowd booed them. But then throughout, throughout the match, they just kept cheering them. And if you were watching this match at home, you were cheering them as well because Xavier Woods was on commentary and he is hilarious. Xavier Woods, who carries a trombone to the ring, and if you don't watch wrestling, just understand that that is part of the ridiculous nature of the WWE. He jumps off a of commentary and as I think it was uh, Kalisto is climbing the ring, uh, I'm sorry, climbing the ladder, about to get the title. <laughs> Xavier Woods jumps up, grabs his trombone, and just throws it and hits him in the back. When anything looks ridiculous in wrestling, you just have to say the words, because wrestling. Kalisto was smart. He knew that trombone wasn't enough to take him off that ladder, so he just did a flip when Kofi grabbed him to take himself out of the match. It was perfect. Kofi climbs to the top, because he's a veteran, he deserves his moments, grabs the titles, and New Day wins. And yes, let's say it together, you and me, you. Day rocks. New Day rocks. New Day rocks. Next up on TLC was a match that nobody cared about, so we won't spend much time on it. Rusev versus Ryback. Now, the reason I don't care about this match is one, it was only announced on Thursday, meaning that it was only put on this card to extend the three hour limit of this show. There's no storyline here. There's no buildup. There's nothing for us to care about. There isn't a title involved. And even if there was a title involved, they haven't given us a reason to care. This is pretty much a match that we've seen on Raw multiple times, on SmackDown multiple times, and we'll probably see it again tonight on Raw for no reason. This is a perfect example of WWE's start-stop storytelling because they will start a feud and then stop it without giving it any real resolution. And then just give us a match that we don't want, that we don't care about for no reason, just to fill time. Uh, if you care, right back, passed out to the accolade, Rusev won, let's move on. Thankfully, the next match has some storyline, some build up, the characters involved have history in between them, and it was for the United States Championship. The match was Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger, which on any given day is a great match for Raw or SmackDown and a chairs match. Now, here's why this match pissed me off. We haven't seen Jack Swagger in a pay-per-view match all year. We've already seen pretty much all the spots that can be done in a chairs match in the past. Alboto won and in the process made nobody care any more about his character and made us probably care even less about the United States title that he holds. 
Next up on the card, we had a match that made me really excited. Now, granted, we've seen different teams of, of ECW originals pop up in WWE, pop up in TNA, but there's still something about it that just makes me excited. I remember as a kid flipping through the channels and then stopping on ECW, and I was like, what is this? This is amazing. This is unique. This is different. I, I like this. So... Anytime I get to see the man and or women who made that brand, made that show, made that moment in wrestling history possible, I love it. And this match features the Dully Boys, who have been around for a while, um, back with the company for a while, I should say, uh, Tommy Dreamer, the heart and soul of ECW, and the Rhino, who's been doing matches over in NXT. And it was the four ECW originals going against the Wyatt family. I love the Wyatt family, and I, I I really like what they have done with them in the past. It's just that they don't seem as scary to me anymore. They aren't as threatening to me anymore. Although, Braun Strowman's creepy tongue thing here is giving me a vibe of deliverance that is kind of creeping me out. Squeal, boy, squeal! But the Wyatts have lost too many matches, too many important matches for any of us to care. And honestly, I'm tired of hearing Bray Wyatt spew this insane dark truth on the microphone only to see him and his family lose every single match. So we knew it, right? We all knew that the Wyatt family had to win this match, and they did. I was really expecting the, all four members of the Wyatt family to stand tall after this eight-man tag team elimination tables match, but that didn't happen. Still, it was okay. The match was okay. It was okay. I mean, there were some okay spots in this, but I think what really took me out of this match was all the botch moves. There was a time where Bubba Ray's foot went through a table. There was a part where uh, Devon was laying on a table and the table broke. If I had to give an MVP to this match, it would be Bubba Ray Dudley. Now, yeah, he's laying here at the feet of the Wyatt family where he had just gone through a table to lose the match, but he was the hardest working guy in this match. And that's saying a lot. Everybody in this match worked hard, did a great job. Luke Harper, Eric Warren, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, Dreamer, Rhino, Devon, they all worked great in this match. But Bubba was on rare form. He was talking to the Wyatts while he was beating their ass. He was uh, talking to the other members of his team barking out orders. Whenever there was a botch with the table, he would hurry up and try to scramble to get the crowd back involved in the match and to do something else before they could focus on what just happened that went wrong, which is perfect wrestling chemistry. Don't focus on or give the audience time to focus on something that's gone wrong. Go ahead and move on to something that you can get right to get the audience back involved in the match. And they did that perfectly. Oh, and uh, WWE, a little note, okay? Your company has had flaming tables in the past. ECW has had flaming tables in the past. Don't tease your audience like that. When you tease your audience, tease your audience, and we see something that we haven't seen it in a long time and we really, really want to see it, and then it doesn't happen. Did you not learn from your experience with Daniel Bryan? That happens, we don't get to enjoy that moment and it kind of takes us out so not seeing the table set on fire before Bubba Ray was put through it um it may sound violent of me but I think it would have been better if the table would have been lit on fire or just not build to it at all the next match was the intercontinental title match between Kevin Owens versus Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens was the champion going into this match along with the ladder match from earlier this may be up there for match of the night there were no weapons involved, no tables, no chairs, no ladders, just two men going out there leaving it all between the ropes for the Intercontinental title. And as you can see, the winner was Dean Ambrose. The match didn't end with a finishing move or anything. It ended with Kevin Owens attempting to do a pop-up powerbomb uh, and then Ambrose countering it into a uh, roll-up Hurricane Ron. And I loved it. I thought the match was great. I thought that was a great ending. It showed that, in a way, Dean Ambrose outsmarted and out-wrestled Kevin Owens. Um, it gives us a reason to see a rematch because, thankfully, this feud has not been killed by us seeing the match in some capacity every single week on television. So I'm really looking forward 
to the rematch between these two, which will probably take place at the Royal Rumble next month. I'm also very interested in seeing where this storyline takes both performers. Uh, I really think, and I could be wrong about this, but if you watch the interview that Dean Ambrose did on uh, WWE.com um, after this match, he brought up the League of Nations. Now, Kevin Owens is not involved, is not a part of the League of Nations, which is Sheamus representing Ireland, Wade Barrett representing the UK, Rusev representing Bulgaria, and Alberto Del Rio representing Mexico. I'm predicting, now you heard it here first, I'm saying that tonight on Raw, I believe about 80% possibility that Kevin Owens, the current lone wolf of the WWE, will join the League of Nations? Or will Dean Ambrose's title win turn into jealousy, fueling a Roman Reigns heel turn? But after what we saw later on in the night, it's going to be kind of hard to make sense of Roman Reigns turning heel. Next up was Charlotte versus Paige, Charlotte being the champion, for the WWE Divas Championship. Now, uh, I was not really excited for this match. We just saw Charlotte versus Paige last month at Survivor Series and Charlotte somewhat cheated to win that match and, and I wasn't really looking forward to it, but I am more interested in where they go from here with Charlotte. The Nature Boy himself, woo! Ric Flair has been more involved in Charlotte's career than before, and it seems to start to be rubbing off on her character, which I really like. We all know that Ric Flair is the dirtiest player in the game. No matter how bad he's beaten in the match, he's no more than one eye gouge and a low blow away from victory. And so it makes sense to have him be the manager of Charlotte and have her turn heel. Not only did we have Ric Flair get involved, but we also had Charlotte remove the, t the turnbuckle pad from the turnbuckle and then pull Paige's face right into the steel and use that to win the match. Paige has had two shots at the title with Charlotte. She's lost both of them. So now I think it's time for Charlotte to move on to other competitors. Maybe the boss, the legit boss of not only NXT, but Raw, SmackDown, and the WWE, maybe Sasha Banks is in line to get her next title shot. And also, uh, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, do me a favor, tone it down. But just tone it down. Remember, the star of the show is Charlotte. Now it's time for your main event. It's time for Sheamus, your WWE World Heavyweight Champion, who beat Roman Reigns after he won the title by cashing in his Money in the Bank contract against Roman Reigns, the former champion who enjoyed a lengthy Five minute and 15 second reign as champion to win back his title in a TLC match. Oh, this? Yeah, this is a different belt. This is the gold spinner belt signed by CM Punk and John Cena. And, you know, it spins and it it got a... Uh... I'm such a geek. Honestly, I wasn't really excited about this match. I already knew the winner was going to be... Sheamus. I mean, come on. He just won the title. There's no way they were going to take it from him that fast. Although, that's also probably what Roman Reigns thought last month. This match, it was it was good. I feel like Sheamus and Roman Reigns did a great job. I didn't keep count, but they put each other through a lot of tables. I mean, a lot of tables. The spot of this match was Roman Reigns actually Superman punching Sheamus off of a ladder through a table. That was really cool to see. That I think that was impressive. And the League of Nations got involved because, again, Sheamus is a bad guy. He has a whole group of bad guys behind him. Why wouldn't they get involved in a no disqualification match and help him win? Makes sense to me. Sheamus won the match. He is still your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It's what happened after the match that literally made no sense. And in a universe where men put on tights to fight each other over titles, that's saying something. After putting on one hell of a match, after performing his ass off, after putting Sheamus through a table with a Superman punch off of the ladder, even though he lost, this happened. Triple H came out because Roman was attacking Sheamus with a chair. I mean, he was vicious. He was beating the crap out of Sheamus because he was so disgusted at losing the WWE title yet again. 
And then Triple H and Stephanie come out because in the real world and in this fictional universe, they run the WWE. And they try to stop Roman from destroying what is their investment, which is their WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Totally makes sense. Somehow we got to this. This is Roman Reigns giving an elbow drop from the top of a table to Triple H, the, the COO of the WWE. Wow. All I have to say is wow. Now, the fans pop for this. The fan, They got a great fan reaction, which is great. Uh, Roman Reigns beat the brakes off Triple H, um, leading to eventually a match. I'm sure they'll do a storyline where Roman gets fired, and then they bring him back, or Roman will get fired, and then he'll keep showing up until they have to hire him back, or they'll come, out, they'll come out and say, I won't fire you, Roman, because that would be too good for you and too easy. I'm going to make your time here in the WWE painful and slow. Any of that could happen. It made no sense. Here's the thing. Let's press rewind. Triple H has had no hand in Roman Reigns not being WWE champion. Roman Reigns was supposed to face Seth Rollins for the WWE championship with Seth being the champion. And Triple H and Stephanie, they weren't happy about it, but they understood that this was the next challenger to Seth's title. And they could have kept Roman far away from the title picture if they wanted to, but they didn't. They allowed Roman to compete in the uh, tournament to crown a new champion. They didn't get involved in any of his matches, and Roman Reigns actually ended up winning the championship by defeating Dean Ambrose in the main event. And yes, you might argue, well, after he won the title, Triple H came out there. So what? Right when Triple H came out, Roman Reigns took him out. And of course, Sheamus responded, came out, cashed in his uh, briefcase, saw that Roman was hurt from wrestling two matches in one night, saw that Roman was distracted, and took advantage of it, and five minutes and 15 seconds into Roman Reigns' title reign, he lost it to Sheamus. Yet, for some reason, Roman Reigns decided to take out his aggression on Triple H. Now, again, we know that in the wrestling world, this is leading up to a match, maybe at the Royal Rumble, maybe, maybe they can stretch it out even until WrestleMania, who knows, with Triple H versus Roman Reigns. I mean, don't get me wrong, the match is going to be amazing. Triple H could carry a match with a wet broom and a paper bag and make it a five-star match of the year candidate. And Roman is very capable in the ring of standing up to a wrestling legend like Triple H and holding his own. It's just that it's just that the match just doesn't appeal to me as it did back when they should have had it uh it's just that the potential of the match doesn't really appeal to me anymore. Now we're going to move on to some predictions for Monday Night Raw. I expect Sasha Banks to become the new challenger for the women's title. I expect John Cena to return. I expect Kevin Owens to join the League of Nations. And I expect Triple H to come out with Stephanie and say that Roman Reigns is either fired or that he's going to make his life a living hell or some capacity like that. So thank you guys so much for joining me for this My Geek Therapy session about WWE TLC. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, comment, and like below, and I'll see you soon.